record last night at the Wildy Gym. Marsha Boyce reports. Deacons with the serve taken on the Rockets. Outside set for Shari Matthews, who got things going for the Rockets with the kill. But Deacon soon took control of the first set, jumping into a 13-7 lead. Fabia Graves going through the middle. Deacons would wrap up that first set at 25-17. Things would be a lot closer in the second. Anisia Wood going down the middle. Rockets were up 8-6 at one stage. It remained close in the latter stages at 23-all. But Deacons would hold on to take the second set 25-23. Deacons would wrap up the game in straight sets, taking the third 25-22. They remain undefeated, headed into the second round. Meanwhile, Warrens in Orange were trying to keep their title hopes alive. But at one stage, they seemed to have their hands full with Club United. Club United weren't going to be the spoilers on the night. Rianne Niles with the winner for Warrens. But that didn't mean they didn't try. After losing the first two sets, Club United surged into an 8-3 lead at the start of the third, putting Warrens under some pressure. Warrens, though, would rally to complete the straight sets victory, winning 25-18, 25-21, 25-22. The other game on the all-female fixture was a clash between the Junior Pride in Black and Toners. The juniors held the early advantage, taking the first set 25-15 and the second 25-14. This one wasn't over just yet, though, as Toners rebounded to take the third set at 23. But the win would go to the juniors, who took the fourth at 20 to win three sets to one. Marsha Boyce, CBC Sports. With his real passion being the test format, Barbadian all-rounder Carlos Brathwaite could make his first test appearance for the West Indies team, having been called up in the 15-man squad for the upcoming tour of Sri Lanka. Uh, Brathit, who took a short break after the CPL, is back in the nets and putting in the necessary work uh, to make the final cut. He says it's a great honor to be included. They had a vacation not too long ago, so just trying to get back into stride, um, both for physical fitness and just rhythm. Um, but at the national level, being there with the guys for a period of time is mostly mental. And I think the most important thing, obviously, you have the skill set, but you need to be mentally ready. I think that at this point in time, I'm pretty secure in my mind, pretty sure the things that I want to do, the way I want to go about things. And with the help of the, the father, if, if selected, things will come into place and I could play some good performances for you, Cindy's. Well, Bradford is one of seven Barbadians called up to the squad and says this is a reflection of the standard of cricket here in BIM. Well, there's a saying around Barbados that when Barbados cricket is strong, wrestling cricket is strong. Um, and I think it's the first time in however long someone made the statement that it was the first time since Sagari and Conrad Hunt that there was a Barbados captain and vice captain. And probably even longer than that since they had seven or eight guys in the wrestling this team. It says a lot about Barbados cricket. We've been doing well and winning trophies. So it just manifests itself that boys have been elevated from the regional level to international level together. Well, Bradford is actually a past student of Milton Lynch Primary School. And it was there that CBC's Amory Burke met up with the all-rounder. He was presenting some much-needed gear and equipment to the aid of the development of the school team. From 1992 to 1996, Carlos Braffitt attended the then Christchurch Boys School, now Milton Lynch Primary, and attributes the foundation gained there as an integral part of his journey to the highest level of cricket. Braffitt, who has also added being an entrepreneur to his resume through his Trident Sports Cricket merchandise brand, has given back to the school with a presentation of gear and equipment to the cricket team. He also imparted some words of motivation to the young players. It's always been my drive to help Milton Lynch now, which was for church boys when I was here. Um, this is where it starts. Um, looking at this group of guys, um, there's the next Charles Braffitt, the next Jason Holder, the next Chris Gale, the next Shane Dowrich. And I think it's, the onus is on us to make sure that you all guys get the tools that you all need to succeed and to replicate what we will do, what we have done, and to even better it. Wrestling yeah, cricket came from a long way. I will pass, I will go. You all guys will come through. You all will pass, you all will go. Wrestling yeah, cricket will live on. And I think that it's up to the older guys to instill that discipline, professionalism, 
and the drive to want to succeed into the younger folk. Brathway also took time out to teach the boys a little batting technique. And Principal Andrew Haynes said it's always good when alumni give back. This gesture this morning demonstrates your strength of character because having risen to the highest level possible as a cricketer, you have not forgotten your roots. You have taken the time this morning from what I'm sure is a very busy schedule to make this presentation. I thank you and I hope that your presence inspires the boys, your presence and your gift inspires the boys, not only in their exploits on the cricket field, but also in their everyday lives. Anne-Marie Burke, CBC Sports. Meanwhile, cricketers at Parkinson also have new gear. The equipment was donated by Clement Broom. Well, it is expected to have some significant impact on the school's cricket program. Just a sample was on display during the school's assembly recently. And after making the presentation, Broom told CBC Sports he's just doing his part in helping to develop the young players. My intention always in giving gears is to, to the youth, to the youngsters. Many I, I always intend to help, just like myself, kids and youngsters that I believe that need it most. And I believe I've uh, known Jeff for a long while and his purpose in looking after youngsters doesn't matter what kind of part of the community to come from, but he was always there to help. And I offered to give him some assistance and he jumped to the uh, off. And I'm here to assist that in, those, in that area. 18 years of track racing may count for nothing. That's how frustrated officials of the Barbados Auto Racing League feel after almost three years of non-access to the newly redeveloped Bushy Park Racing Circuit. Barrel Treasurer Kurt Hamblin says they have been trying unsuccessfully through dialogue and meetings with the government officials to regain access to the facility which they once called home. The St. Philip Circuit is operated by the Bushy Park Circuit Inc., which was formed after a multi-million dollar facelift. Hamblin says the $75,000 daily rental fee proposed by the BPC is exorbitant, but after reviewing the matter, Barrel has come up with a workable solution. What we submitted was we are going to give a $3,000 outright rental and for every person that comes through the gate, our history shows on a normal circuit racing event, we have between five to 8,000 people through that gate. We are prepared to give a dollar per head of every person that comes through. So on a given day, worst case scenario, three and five is $8,000. And we prepare to pay for the, all the other amenities to put on a subtle race meet. Um, at the end of the day, it's the, really the sport that hurts. And you can't have it without total cooperation. Race Committee Director of Barra, Roger Welch Payne, says they have already put in a request to have two race meets in 2016 in an effort to provide an opportunity for their members to race at the venue. There was all these grand plans laid out on the table and we thought that we'd be racing. We never thought that we'd be in this position. And all we want, like, you know, we don't want to own the facility. We don't want it for free. We want it at a reasonable rate, $75,000 a day, especially when you calculate that your first day, which is Saturday for qualifying, you, you don't get a big crowd. So that's $150,000 for a weekend. That's, that's, that's unreasonable. And we've put what we can see as reasonable based on, because the numbers are falling, the economic situation of the whole world, not only Barbados. You know, people don't have that money to spend that they used to have. Um, so we've put what is reasonable on the table. And Payne also says in the meantime, Burl has managed to form some new alliances to help broaden its base. We will have a much better package to bring to the public because we're not only doing circuit racing now, we're doing, uh, we, we're in conjunction with BD1, which is a drifting club. Uh, we have the ATV guys on board, we have off-road people on board, you know, so we have a bigger package to bring to Bushy Park now. So we're just ready to go, but unfortunately we're in this position, but we're ready. Well, that's it for sports. Lisa returns with a look at the business. 
anyone can get gastroenteritis. Preschoolers.